Peace and blessings. Welcome back to the channel once again, where we talk all things health and healing from a holistic perspective, and today will be no different. Today, I'm going to give you eight tips, eight tips that you can use to create a healthy shopping cart next time you're at the farmer's market or the grocery store. Now, here's why this is so important. Most people don't understand, but when you walk into a grocery store, you are literally under attack. And here's what I mean by that. Since children, we have literally been programmed to eat a certain way, to be attracted to certain foods. Now, and a lot of that is not innate. It's not something we instinctually know. It's something that we've been taught through conscious programming. A lot of that subconscious programming is the commercials that we grew up on, like every Saturday. Every Saturday, you're watching cartoons as a kid. Between all of those cartoon commercials, is nothing but fast food restaurants, this type of burger, this type of Happy Meal, with this type of toy inside of it, okay? These type of candies, these type of drinks, you know, like with pouches and Sunny D and et cetera, and et cetera, et cetera. So we grow up being programmed to think that this is real food. And then we go into adulthood and it gets worse. We're not only continually programmed with those same type of commercials, but we're also programmed with now drug commercials. Now think about it for a second. When you're watching your favorite TV show or your favorite sports team, watch the commercials on the in the between. You're gonna notice that the vast majority of them are food commercials and drug commercials. And think about it. Food is a socially accepted drug, okay? And it's a drug because we get addicted to it in the same way we get addicted to other drugs, whether they be illicit drugs or even some of the pharmaceuticals. When you think about the opioid crisis that's going on right now, that's killing six figures, okay? A hundred thousand plus people every year. Now just think about that. We're being programmed at a very small age into adulthood for the rest of our lives. So when we walk into a grocery store, you are not only under attack, it is an all out war. And the reason why most people lose the war is because they don't have the right mentality walking into the grocery store. They don't have the mentality of, I'm gonna walk into this grocery store to add health to my life, to make sure I get food that is healthy for my kids. You know, we don't walk into the grocery store with that mentality. We walk into the grocery store thinking, what good foods can I get today? Put together these tasty meals and all of the shiny colors and advertisements just sway us in a particular direction. So what I want to do is give you a mentality and a few tips that help you navigate this rat maze that we call the supermarket today. Okay. And now what's really important to know and understand is that 70 years ago, and that's our grandparents, okay? Go back to the beginning of our grandparents' lives, okay? 70 years ago. Think about it like this. Supermarkets didn't exist really 70 years ago. So the supermarket itself is a relatively new concept. Back then, people went into these very small markets, you know, that had very simple foods with simple ingredients, okay? No flashy labels and you know, um, all this sort of natural this and extra fiber and enhanced and enriched with this, none of that stuff, okay? But you walk into the supermarket today and you compare the supermarket that, you know, our great grandparents would have walked to, into as children. And I'll guarantee you this, 90% of the foods that are in the supermarket today, they didn't exist when your grandparents were growing up. The vast majority of the foods in the supermarket today are in box bag, cans, and jars, and are new products that didn't exist 70 years ago. And the products that we're eating today, and I'm gonna call them products instead of foods, because most of those products are laced and laden with food chemicals that we don't understand what they are. They sound very simple, but they're very complicated, especially when it comes to our biochemistry and physiology. So it's so important we know that everything has shifted, okay? Once our food got industrialized after World War II 
And when I say industrialized, I mean our food became became man-made after World War II. It changed everything. It changed our health. It changed how we look at food. And it also changed our relationship with ourselves in many regards. So it's really important we understand that when you walk into a supermarket, you are under attack and it is a war. It is a war for your health. It's a war for your children's health. And it also is a war on your money too, okay? They're trying to win your, your billfold. They're trying to win your pocketbook, okay? They're trying to snatch your purse. And they're trying to do it in a very nice way, okay? So it's really important we have the proper mentality when we walk into the grocery store because I'm going to tell you this. Most of you don't know, but 25% of the food, according to studies, 25% of the food that you're going to buy at the supermarket, 25% of it, Americans just throw out. It's either thrown out because it goes bad or thrown out because you made too much of it. But in whatever the reason may be, 25%, that's one-fourth of what you buy at the supermarket, the one-fourth of the food that you buy is thrown out into the garbage can. Now, I want you to think about this. Let's say you got a family and the monthly budget for food for your family is $1,000, okay? Throwing away 25% of your food would equate to throwing away 25% of your budget. That's $250, okay? Now think about that. In one year, if you shop properly and reduce your food waste to close to zero as possible, you can save as much as $3,000, okay? So that, again, that this is why these tips are so important because they're also going to help you save yourself from doing that, throwing away so much food. The other thing that's really important is that we really need to remember that food is medicine and our kitchen is our medicine cabinet. And so again, it goes back to that mentality. Is your kit, you're gonna have the kind of kitchen that is a pharmacy with a pH, like prescription drugs, or you're gonna have the kind of kitchen that's like nature's pharmacy with a F pharmacy. Now, if you're gonna have the kind of kitchen with foods that are highly, you know, saturated with all types of salt and sugars and food chemicals, then you're gonna have a pH pharmacy, which means later on, you're gonna need prescriptions from another pharmacy. But if you eat directly from nature's pharmacy, the garden, then that is your medicine food becomes your medicine at that point. So I'm going to give you eight tips, eight tips that are going to help you along this journey. All right. So, and remember the tips I'm really giving you is about this mentality you have to have. It's a war on your health. It's a war for your attention. It's a war for your money and your earnings. Okay. And I'll tell you, here's the scary thing. We grew up under the impression that we were being fed knowledge that was going to help us survive, live longer. One of those myths was that milk does the body good and it makes your teeth and bones strong. Well, you'll notice that back in the days, they used to have all of these athletes who would sort of pose in commercials, showing off their muscles with a milk mustache to kind of encourage people to eat more, drink more milk. You'll notice you haven't seen one of those in like five, seven years. And that's because now it's illegal to do that because the studies have now proven that milk does not do a body good. And not only does it not do a body good, milk actually makes your bones and teeth weak, okay? So we've been fed a lot of lies about what is healthy for us and what we should be consuming. And a lot of the agencies that are supposed to be protecting us fed those lies to us. And a lot of the reason why they did was the vast majority of the support, you know, that these agencies receive are from food companies. And a lot of the other support is from drug companies, which is why when you look at our commercials, the vast majority of our commercials are also food and drug commercials. Okay, so it's hugely important to understand that this is a mentality and you got to decide what side of the mentality you're going to be on. You're going to be on the side of mentality that's about health and healing. 
okay? And about generational health and wealth? Or is it going to be on the other side, which whatever they feed me, I receive. And whatever I get out of that, I get out of that, okay? So hugely important. Now, let's get started on those eight tips. Tip number one, okay? Again, about the mentality. Eat before you go shopping. Eat before you go shopping. Here's why. We all know we've gone somewhere to the grocery store, out to eat, and we went hungry. And what do we always do when we order food, when we're too hungry, when we're starving? We overorder because our eyes are bigger than our stomachs. And I guarantee you, if you start eating before you go to the supermarket, guess what's going to happen? You're going to start shopping rationally. And that's the most important thing. All right. You're going to save some of that 25% that everybody else is throwing out into the garbage. Okay. So before you go out, eat. Okay. All right. Which leads to the second one. Before you go out, have a game plan, meaning make a list. And before you make that list, you probably need to eat. Because <laughs> again, our eyes are always bigger than our stomachs. Okay. And so make a list of foods that make sense. Make a list of foods that make sense. Make a list of foods that make sense to eat for the week. Make a list of foods that are healthy and healing to you. Very, very important. All right. So have a game plan before you go. I know exactly what I'm going to buy before I go to the supermarket. Okay. We all done it. Got up to the register, went to the supermarket with a list of four things, came out of the supermarket with a cart full of things. Okay. We do not want to do that. All right. So please make that list. Have a game plan. As I said before, when you walk through that door, you are under attack. It is a war for your money and your health. Okay. So you need to be prepared. If you go to war without a plan, the, you're planning to fail. Okay. So number two, have a game plan. All right. Number three, if possible, shop at a, a farmer's market and the best kind of the local farming farmer's market. And this goes for whether you live in a metropolitan city or you live in a small town. Okay. There's typically farmer's markets in the area. You just need to find out where they are. I'll tell you, I've gone, travel all around the country and all around the world. And every time I looked hard enough, I always found a, soup, a farmer's market. Okay. And the benefit of a farmer's market, you can go there and actually buy things from a farmer and build a relationship with them so that then you can ask questions about, do you spray this produce with pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides? Okay. Do you use natural seeds? You can ask them anything you want. Whereas when you go to the supermarket, you don't know who, who, who made this food or where it came from. Okay. It could have came from China for all you know. Okay. But the best produce you can get is the produce you can get locally. Okay. Versus the produce you're getting from thousands upon thousands of miles away. Okay. Number four. 80% of your shopping cart should be from the produce section. 80% of your shopping cart. I know you're thinking like, that's got to be crazy. But every time I go to the supermarket and I'm doing my shopping and people see me pulling this veggie, this veggie, this fruit, this one, you know, or they see, they look at, or better yet, look at my refrigerator and see like, it may be a week where all I'm eating is fruits from the farm or veggies from the farm. And they look in there and there's like, there's nothing but produce in there. You know, like, that's the way it's supposed to be. You're supposed to eat single ingredient foods. Those are whole foods. Not like the whole foods supermarket. I'm talking about whole foods, individual foods, one ingredient. Kale, apple, tomato. Those are individual foods, okay? That's how your refrigerator should look. That's how your cart should look, okay? So, and the other, other big thing is when you walk into a supermarket, there's usually two entrances. OK, walk into the one where it begins with the produce, because that's really where you need to begin and end. All the other things are food products, mostly. Now, if you can get some good products that have very few ingredients and don't have those 
very toxic chemicals in them, all power to you, that can go to your 20%. But what you really need to be doing is eating 80 to 100% of produce, okay? Fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, okay? Number five, choose seasonal produce, okay? There's nothing worse than going to the supermarket and trying to buy something off season. And you'll notice on our farm with our company, I Heart Fruit Box, you'll notice everything we provide to you is seasonal, okay? We do not pro provide any fruits that are not seasonal. And here's why. The fruits that are seasonal, when something is in season, is more nutritious, is more delicious, okay? And so that's enough in and of itself, okay? But foods that are grown within season are quite often, you know, it's easier to grow for farmers, so it's less pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides as well, too. So eat seasonally, buy within the season. We've all, in the past, gone to the supermarket, bought, bought some watermelon during the winter or some mangoes that taste like chalk during the winter, okay? Because these are summer and spring fruits. All right, so if you buy it off season, then it's going to be less nutritious and it's going to be less delicious as well, too. All right, number six, buy mostly organic. If you can get it organic, great. That way you don't have to panic, okay? Again, with iHeart Fruit Box, we only provide organic, seeded, seasonal fruit, okay? That's that's. That's from me to you, organic, seasonal, and seeded, all right? I have given you every fruit-bearing seed, okay? All right, so it's hugely important. As much as possible, buy organic. I know that there's a whole bunch of science out there that says there's no different. Trust me, there is a difference, all right? There is a difference when, especially being a farmer, and I see what other farmers do. And how they spray and how they have to wear suits when they spray things. If they got to wear a suit to spray it on, trust me, you can't just wipe it off. <laughs> Especially when you think about these fruit, these fruits and veggies are maturing and growing and you're spraying something on it. And you think that you could just wipe that off or soak it in some water. Doesn't work like that. So buy mostly organic. OK, trust me, there is a difference. And if you are a farmer, you know that if you're a farmer and you're honest with yourself, you know that there's a difference. OK, number seven, read labels, please read labels. If you're going to go shop in that part of the supermarket that is not the produce section, read labels, look for whole ingredients and it should be less than five. That's sort of like a rule of thumb. Look for whole ingredients, less than five ingredients. OK. When I tell you labels are so complicated, it would I would it would take a master class for me to help you understand how complicated they make the labels because there's so much trickery into label label um, food labels these days. Okay, and a lot of that again is lobbying. Every time we try to create something that makes labels uh, more legible and understandable, they lobby and against it. Food companies, the same food companies that you're giving your resources to, that you're making rich, they lobby against you understanding the food label, okay? Hugely important. And then the last tip that I'm going to give you is before you check out, evaluate your cart, okay? I, I used to do this and people would want... People always thought like I was running out of money or trying to figure out if I, it, I had enough money to purchase what was in the cart. Nope. What I do is before I check out, I go, I, I go in the aisle, I go through there and ask myself, is this healing me? Did I actually need this or did this something I want? Did I just grab this impulsively? I'm asking my que myself questions. What meal is this going to make for me? Like I'm asking myself this question. Am I going to have time to eat this because this only lasts two or three days? And a lot of times what happens about a quarter or a third of the cart gets removed just because it was like I was choosing with my eyes instead of my brain. Okay. So it's hugely important before you check out, make sure you do that final evaluation of your cart to remove anything that isn't nourishing for you and to leave all the stuff that is. 
Okay, hope you have enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what you're doing to make sure you have a healthy cart. And let me know if you're enjoying the content. If you're enjoying the content, show me some love by hitting that subscribe button, sharing this with others, and commenting below. Thanks for watching this video, but be sure to check the next video out that's right here. But everything I talk about is how do we take a holistic and natural approach to healing other than a man-made approach? And also, how do we prevent dis-ease in the body as well, too? Because, you know, they say...